One jar is special because simply it was the first. It's first and foremost unit. This is the foundation unit. We have been setting the standard from that time until now. Being the one that started out, that other persons could learn from us. Every time that we deploy troops out in the operational area, our soldiers put their lives on the line. First Battalion has a, it's almost a pride in its history and it's something that as a commander you have to feed into and I think it's something the battalion can be very proud of. One JR <clears throat> has a particular pride of being the first. I think the spirit of a unit lies within the leadership. The unit is what the leader makes it. You can inspire your men and lead them in such a way that the spirit is of such that morale is high, they get the job done, then that has a lot to do with the leadership style and the leadership team that exists within the battalion. When I became commanding officer of the 1st Battalion, there was only one regular battalion at the time, that was one day. Everything that had to be done was provided by one jar. One jar is special because simply it was the first. It's first and foremost unit. First and foremost in painting the image of who the Jamaica Defense Force is in the eyes of the public. 1962, just before independence, probably the 31st of July. We had in Jamaica Defense with still one regular battalion and the one reserve battalion. In addition to the usual ceremonial and internal security duties, we had to give a lot of assistance to the Jamaica Constable. I served in JDF from 1981. 2011. I am from a military family. My father, former chief of staff, Middle Eastern Robinson. I had two brothers and an uncle who served the rank of major. I also had a brother-in-law who served the rank of a captain and one cousin who served also the rank of captain. I guess the greatest influence would, would have been that of my father. Certainly within the, the Robinson family, there existed for a period of time a very unique situation. From 1963 to 1966, my father was commanding officer of the 1st Battalion. Also serving in the battalion at that time was his brother, Major Trevor Robinson, who was a company commander, and his eldest son, 2nd Lieutenant Anthony Robinson. Uh, I don't think that unique situation has been repeated since. I am Major Anthony Robinson, um, Jamaica Defence Force uh, from June 1963 to I think about August 1975. It's, it was only, it was 12 years. Um, but, but uh, to me, it still appears to have been literally my entire adult life. Although I realize that I left here 36 years ago, 
you know, and and yet it 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 had that impression that that you felt like that's all you ever did. My father was the commanding officer of the battalion, and I'm going to tell you something that in itself was terrifying because I knew that he was going to make sure that nobody thought that I had any special privileges. And because I was understudying Bobby Morris as ensign, I acted as the CEO's ADC on the rehearsals where I had the order of parade because I needed to know the order of parade. And one afternoon out on that polo ground, he's walking around and I'm walking around behind him. And he, he is recalling the next word of command and he, he, he turns and he says, Stand at ease, stand easy, you know? And I look at the order of the parade and go, uh, yeah. Yeah? Who are they? What not you think you are talking to? This is in front of the entire battalion, <laughs> right? And I was bawled out for forgetting my place. And that, I didn't have to ball out again. I learned my lesson one time. Montier has over the years developed um, a, a culture and ethos about it. Um, a lot of it has to do with it certainly one of the first units in Nigeria and having this very rich history. There is, I can't think of any major event operation that Nigeria has been involved in that Montier has not been a part of. Whether it was the foreign troops to Grenada, in 1983, Trinidad in 1990, Haiti in 1994 to 1996, uh, again Haiti in, in 2010, uh, but it was sending troops to Buckingham Palace for public duties, a state of emergency, it was a sporting event, but it was hurricane or other disaster relief. One year has always been there uh, and they have developed uh, a sort of storyline behind the unit that traces the history and the evolution of the JLF that is inescapable. You cannot have any discussion about the JLF whether one JR or persons who serve in one JR being included. One JR is guided or motivated by its motto, which is first and foremost. And as a result, there is a fighting spirit within the battalion. There is a level of cohesion that I've never seen in any other unit in the force. One GR is the first unit I was posted to, having left the training depot. And as a result, there is an affection for One GR. I spent approximately 19 years in One GR before I was transferred to the JDF training depot, where I spent three years, after which I came back to One GR as a regimental sergeant major. I spent another seven years in the unit, then I was transferred to the headquarters where I was the first force SAR major, after which I was commissioned to the rank of a captain, then I came back to Wanjar as a quartermaster, spent four years in Wanjar as a quartermaster, then I was transferred back to Support and Services Battalion where I now serve as the officer commanding the military police. I enjoyed my time in Wanja. I think that Wanja continues to be first and foremost. And at the end of my stint, after completing 40 years in the JDF, which ends in 2014, I would have looked back and I would have said to myself that Wanja would have been the best unit in the Jamaican Defense Force.